Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today we have a big story to talk about coming out of the LEC. This one is like a, around a week old or something like that, but um, there's just been so much going on that uh, I knew this was something I wanted to get back to, but it wasn't just a super, super high priority for me at the time. Um, but I do think this is a very, very big uh, and, and meaningful and overall impactful story. Um, and this is a report coming from Alejandro Gomez. Sources Adam has reached a verbal agreement with Team BDS to be promoted to LEC in 2023. We'll dive into the article in a second, but I do think this is interesting because Adam has had a strange career so far. You know, obviously he came up with Fnatic and, uh, well, he, he was on K-Corp, all that, and then he, he breaks onto the LEC stage on Fnatic and has an interesting split where he leads the LEC in solo kills, I believe, ends up uh, actually being a part of the Fnatic teams that, en that ends up going to Worlds. He pulls out Darius in the game five against G2, against Wonder. They end up winning that game. Um, and it seemed like his career was on the up and up. It seemed like he had a bright, bright future ahead of him, not only himself, but with Fnatic. Uh, and then, of course, we got the upset drama, the whole upset situation. Adam being a very, very big part in that drama and to this day a lot of people still holding that against Adam and I'm not saying that you are incorrect or correct for doing that I'm not really saying anything I'm just um, saying that there are still a lot of people that feel that way uh, fans uh, people in the community and you have to assume some players as well uh, there was definitely plenty of people on upset and his wife's side um, during the whole thing and especially as more and more information came out really feeling like Adam handled the situation very, very poorly, that he was, you know, pretty awful in the situation, whatever. Um, and I understand where they're coming from. I do get it. At the same time, Adam was, what, 18 years old at that time, 18 or 19. You know, he did some stupid stuff, obviously said some, you know, some weird or stupid things. Maybe he didn't have full information. Maybe he was speaking too soon, or uh, maybe he was just being kind of a dickhead. You know, I, I don't know if we know the entire full story yet, but um, he was very, very talented. I don't think the questions were about just how good he was or could be. I'm not saying he was like dominant that split by any means. He led the league in solo kills, but had a ton of solo deaths. Definitely threw away some games, definitely carried some games, but there was at least talent and there was at least potential, especially as a top laner in the LEC or just in the West in general, where there isn't a whole lot of top lane talent. I mean, look at this past split and all the kind of top laners that were even in the LEC, let alone um, like the upper tier of the ERLs and stuff. There's just not a lot of amazing names. There's not a lot of up and coming, really, really spicy uh, or interesting prospects. And Adam definitely fits that mold. He might have a pretty low floor, but at the very least, he has a pretty high ceiling when many people don't have that. He has a big champion pool. He can play aggressive. He can play for lane. Um, obviously, there's going to be questions about whether or not he can play weak side, whether he can play tanks, whether he can uh, play weak side without dying or, or giving away leads or even when he does get a lead if he's able to not piss it away and stuff like that but a team like BDS who was so bad last year and won so few games and was relevant or close in so few games it was interesting or exciting to watch in so few games um having a player like Adam sit in their academy you know wasn't necessarily the best idea I don't think and then bringing him back up the LEC I really do think is a no-brainer now Again, Adam was not great for BDS in the 2022 spring split uh, when he did start for them. And we've heard some weird things coming about out about that team. I know Grabs was like saying like, oh, I've never had uh, players like quit on this or not trying in scrims and like all this weird stuff. But the team really did suck. And it was so many young players all together that were all struggling and all don't know how to go through the trials and tribulations of a long season or go through any adversity or anything like that, which is why I don't love the idea of all kind of youthful teams in general. I think you need some veterans. I think you need some winners in there to kind of show all these young guys what's going on. And maybe BDS's idea is that Grabs is going to be that guy. But um, I really do think it needs to be a player or a very, 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 like, you know, the perfect situation of a coach coming in and doing something like that. And obviously Grabs was just um, not successful. And I don't know if anyone else would have been successful. I don't know. It's very, very possible that Team BDS just was not talented enough or didn't fit well or gel well enough or whatever. But I do think Adam, drama, craziness, whatever aside, this guy is 20 years old. Um, he will be turning 21. We can see here December 30th of 2001 is his birthday. So he'll be turning 21 before the next season starts. Um, which is weird, you know, esports, it's so hard to tell who's old, who's young, who's middle-aged, all this stuff, but I don't think turning 21, I'm covering this up, I'll show it for you guys, uh, I don't think turning 21 is bad by any means, yes, he's not a 17-year-old cracked Zoomer coming up, uh, playing Aurelia and Riven and all this stuff, but he is still, uh, I think the most important part is relatively unexperienced, uh, you know, he's had two splits in the LEC, um, and I do think he has a chance to still get better, and, and in some ways, him getting sent back down to BDS Academy, 
and having the success he did in the ERL, showing that he is, even if he wasn't in great form in the LEC, that he is still one of the best top laners in the ERLs and in EU Masters and everything is a really good sign. You know, Team BDS was able to um, be really strong throughout the whole summer split in the ERLs. They were able to make it all the way to EU Masters finals, I believe. And I think they lost three to two, uh, two heretics in the finals. Um, so, you know, Adam was on a team that, that made it all the way to the championship. He, he was a very, very big part of what they had going on. I, I do think that BDS Academy was, uh, if I remember correctly, pretty up and down throughout the LFL season. But again, they turned it on when they needed it most. They, they had a nice run through EU Masters and Adam was a very, very big part of this. Now, there are some people questioning, hey, he's immature. He's dumb. He's an idiot. I, I don't want to root for him. I don't want around my team he's toxic he's horrible and that's fine I get it he's gonna have to prove people wrong in that regard there is also people saying that hey Adam might be one of this one of these guys that is too good for the ERLs but not good enough for the LEC and that is something that he is gonna have to prove wrong as well now again he did show some signs of something during his time with Fnatic, but obviously Fnatic is one of the better teams, usually in the LEC. They're a pretty talented team, um, and League of Legends, ultimately, at the end of the day, is a team game, and in these team games, you are going to look a little bit better when you're on a strong team. You're going to have more opportunities. You're going to get to make more plays. You're going to be able to rebound from mistakes better. You know, you're, you're, the players around you are just going to be better. Your support's going to make some better roams. Your jungle's going to make some better ganks. They're, they're going to have better information. You're going to be able to play better, um, so he looked much better on Fnatic than he did on BDS when, hey, the players around him and the coaching staff and the systems weren't as good. So it's hard to fairly or accurately judge these players sometimes. Are they as good as their stints on the good teams? Are they as bad as their stints on the bad teams? Um, I don't know. And what is the BDS roster even going to look like in 2023? I'm not entirely sure, um, but this is one more top lane position that looks like it will be filled out for 2023. Um, we did also have uh, here, I believe, Alejandro Gomez talking about uh, sources irrelevant has reached a verbal agreement with SK Gaming and will be their top laner in the LEC. Um, we can talk about this in another video as well, but SK has significant, apparently at least, significantly increased its budget and is targeting big players this offseason. And their first signing is irrelevant. I don't totally understand that. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but this is potentially another top lane spot that is going to be open. You know, I really would have thought SK might get aggressive in the top lane uh, because, again, there's not that many good ones to come by. Um, and then you have guys like Odo, who's set to be a free agent. You have Alfari that might be available from Vitality. Um, we're starting to get less and less teams that are possible or available. Um, who knows what Mad Lines is going to do with Armut as well. More and more teams with less spots available, more and more top laners looking for a home. I think this shuffle of top lane throughout the rest of the LEC offseason is going to be very, very interesting to watch. Um, and, and locking up a pretty damn good one in Adam early, I don't think is necessarily a horrible thing, especially because you already have him. You know, you, you got him for, for relatively cheap, I'm assuming. You don't have to pay him a ton. You, you're just calling him up. You're letting him go. Uh, if he does great this year, awesome. You, you have a maybe a, a franchise player to build your team around. If Adam doesn't do as good this year, hey, so what? Your, your team BDS, you're probably going to suck in 2023. Anyway, it, unless you have some kind of crazy offseason that nobody expects or anything like that. I don't know. I'm happy to see Adam back in the LEC. I hope he pops off. I think he's a fun player to watch. Um, I think he has a chance, a real chance, to prove some people wrong this year, but we'll have to wait and see. Pretty much it for this video today, guys. Hopefully catch you in the next one.